no matter what kind of meshes you have, you can construct a finite volume solver that works for all of these meshes through a common data structure. So you don't need to adapt your finite volume solver to every different type of mesh. So you can have a solver that given a mesh, you ask for what are my, for example, uh, interface normals, okay? And uh, what are my neighbors of each cell? And you can, you can apply the same solver to all kinds of different meshes. How do we achieve this? We need several data structures in order to make the finite volume mesh work. And the most important data structures is the interface. Okay, so for every interface, every interface must know, oops, must know its neighbors, its neighboring cells. Right, so this is the most important criterion. And uh, so, so essentially, if let's say, if I have every, every interface marked as i and j, okay? So i and j are the index of the cells which lies on both sides. So in, in applying a finite volume, we first go through we first go through every pair of i and j's. Compute the f i j equal to f numerical u i and u j. Because in the computer, you know for every interface what is the corresponding i and j. So using the i and j, you can find the cell averages at the cell i and cell j. With these cell averages, we can compute the numerical flux, right? Okay, and also for every interface, you must, uh, must store, and that's something that's good to calculate in advance, the normal of that interface times the size of that interface. So we can compute that in advance before we even start solving the differential equations. So the second step after computing the flux, so this is a vector, uh, we compute the flux dot with the surface normal times the cell size. All right. Okay. And then, after this, we can clear, we can set all dui dt to zero. So clear the time derivatives. And that can actually be applied when you start uh, computing that time step, right? So set dui dj, uh, dt to zero. And then, then after you compute this, which you know, if I sum over this for all the neighbors of i, I get the time derivative. So with this, I simply dui dt is equal to dui dt plus, right, plus is the, uh, so for i, I think it's going to be minus minus 1 over vi times fij and ij sij so this is this is i and for the jth cell it'll be minus uh, it'll be it'll be add it'll be uh, addition so this is 1 over vj the same the same flux 
this uh, left hand side and right hand side du by dt they are corresponding to different time steps no, they, they are they are corresponding to the same time step. I'm just uh, so imagine this as a variable, this and this as a variable you have in your computer. In the beginning, I set all these variables to zero, and as I go through every pairs of neighboring grid points or every interface equivalently, I am accum I'm I'm changing the values of du i d t and du j d t. <coughs> for these values. You can imagine after I go through every interface, the value of duidt is going to be the total sum of these quantities, right, as I go over all the neighbors of i. And the value of dujdt is also going to be the correct value after I go through all the, all the interfaces. And the advantage of this method is it doesn't matter how many neighbors does each cell have. I don't have to do anything differently for neighbors of different sizes, of, so for, for cells of different number of neighbors. So in this case, you, you did that, that for, the, for the G set instead of uh, having NJI instead of NIG. Since if you're, if you're taking set J, the output facing number will be NJI. Right. The difference between these two are, uh, I'm still using NIJ here because NIJ is the normal that points from the cell I to cell J. NIJ here, NIJ is going to be exactly equal to the minus of NJI. And SIJ being a scalar is equal to the same as SJI, right? So, so the size is the same. Ah, so this is actually what guarantees the discrete conservation in finite volume schemes. If you, if you think of, if you track a quantity, if you track a quantity that is total is equal to the summation of VI over all the I's, DUI, DT, after you iterate over every interface, you added a certain quantity to duidt, and you subtracted uh, the same quantity, but like with a different ratio, with a different vi versus vj on dujdt. This total is always going to be staying the same. This total will always be the same throughout your iteration over all the interfaces. Right, so this total is initially zero because you set dui dt equal to zero for all the i's. And after you go through every interface, this total is going to stay the same because if you multiply this with v G, vi and this with vj, the add and subtraction exactly cancels each other. That's what guarantees the discrete conservation properties in finite volume. And to honor it, you must use the same flux uh, for, for i and for j, the same flux between i and j for the cell i and cell j. And uh, uh, you should, I don't see any reason not, to have this property satisfied. Right? The interface must be, we call, consistent when seen from the cell i and seen from cell j. All right. So this du by dt equal to zero is the initialization step. The next two equations are the update step. Yes. So, yes. So, so update is with respect to what? Each iteration, or is it time? Or is the iteration? The the update is applied when we go through all the interfaces. So so after after you go through all the interfaces, you complete it calculating the du dt uh, for on time step. So the, the, the loop through the interfaces is the same as our loop through the grid points. 
in the one-dimensional case. It's just in the one-dimensional case, as we loop over the eye, you can either see it as if we are looping through the cells, or you can see it through as if we are looping through the, the interfaces. Right, remember in the 1D case, in our, in our uh, code over here, Right, so we all, all the way up to here, up to line 20, is actually constructing the fluxes. Right, in the, uh, so, so, I mean, we didn't do any loop over here, but you can see this as we are looping through the interfaces to construct the flux at each interface. And here, when we when we perform a loop, we are looping over all the interfaces to construct the flux and add and subtract the numbers to the adjacent cells. Right. 